Hey everyone, today we will be studying the disorders of the drainage system. Right, remember uh, when we were studying the lacrimal system, we said that there are two parts to the lacrimal system. There is the part which secretes, right, which includes the lacrimal gland, and there is the part which absorbs the secreted material, right? That system is called the drainage system, right? So, epiphora, the first disorder. So, epiphora is basically, uh, it's, it's overflowing of tears onto the face, right? There is excess production of tears and, uh, and the, the tear film cannot hold it and as a result it falls from the eye on to the face, right? right? And epiphora could be caused because of overproduction, right? Or it can also be caused due to decreased drainage efficiency, right? What could cause, what could possibly cause uh, epi epiphora? An obstruction of the tear outflow tract, an obstruction of the drainage system right anywhere an obstruction in the drainage system would cause the flow of tears to stop let's let's uh, very quickly draw the drainage system once again so we had these puncti right we had the lacrimal canaliculi right and then we had these canaliculi joined together to a common canal uh, to a common canal then we had this big lacrimal sac and then we would see that it would end this nasal lacrimal sac would end at the nasal lacrimal duct right and from the nasal lacrimal duct the tears would uh, actually go into the nasal cavity so block any of this place right block either the puncti block the canaliculi or cause problems or block the uh, nasal lacrimal duct and you will stop the flow of tears right punctal stenosis right blocking of the puncti right canalicular atresia and involutional stenosis of the nasolacrimal duct all three of these we, we just discussed in the previous slide so epiphora would result then there is another interesting condition for example a guy has a has a very serious car accident in which he injures his face fractures some of his bones specifically like the nasal bone etc right if there is a poor management of the condition it could result into bones uh, not getting back into their original shape there will be poor reconstruction the poor reconstruction could cause problems in the duct system right so poor reconstruction of the of the duct system after trauma can also lead to epiphora and then we have in neonates a condition which we will study uh, in the next slide right it's basically when the nasal lacrimal duct does not open right we will study this in the next slide so if if it doesn't open what will happen epiphora and then there's other there are other conditions which could cause uh, excess tear formation like like for example irritation and inflammation or infections right in order to treat epiphora you have to treat the underlying cause right another disease we have here is the congenital nasolacrimal duct obstruction right and in, over here there is a membrane which is covering the nasal lacrimal duct as a result it's blocked right it's imperforated usually when babies are born this membrane gets perforated but in, a con in, in this condition the membrane does not perforate as a result there is a whole blockage of the nasal lacrimal duct system right of the duct system there would be epiphora because it's blocked right there would be a sticky mucopurulent discharge because of course when there is a blockage there is a chance of infection right as a result it could cause uh, mucus which is uh, full of pus right purulent mucus right and then it's usually bilateral it usually occurs in both of the lacrimal systems right left and right both and regurgitation test is positive right what is regurgitation test is it's simply when you press on the on the on the on the location where there is the nasal lacrimal duct the tears which are deposited there they will ooze out right they will regurgitate outside as a result we say that we have a positive regurgitation test and complications could include conjunctivitis decryocystitis and fistula formation treatment now well it usually resolves all by itself right but if it and and to to speed up the process you can also massage the massage the, the, the lacrimal sac from time to time and give antibiotics uh, to prevent any any uh, bacterial infection uh, probing and irrigation so for example here's a nasal lacrimal sac and here's uh, the nasal lacrimal duct right 
the nasal lacrimal duct is covered by a membrane what we can do that we could use a probe and insert this probe we could actually mechanically force this open and then through the probe we could uh, put we could irrigate this place by putting water here and letting the water flow to the nasal cavity right as a test as a confirmative test that the membrane has indeed been perforated so probing and irrigation is a treatment it is very successful dcr is a surgery right uh, which is performed uh, we will talk about uh, dcr later usually it is not performed in this condition because uh, probing and irrigation is almost 95% of the time successful, but if there is a need for DCR, uh, DCR is performed. We will be talking about DCR in the next lectures. There's a whole slide uh, about DCR. So, then we come to a, to a condition called acute dacryocystitis or acute dacryocystitis. So acute dacryocystitis is uh, an acute inflammation of the nasolacrimal sac, right? Due to blockage of the nasolacrimal duct in adults, right? This is in adults, and and what will happen is, you see, see, there's acute inflammation, right? And don't forget the five signs of acute inflammation, right? Pain, redness, swelling, uh, right? And there's uh, also loss of function and uh, temperature. Let's leave that for now, and because it's acute you'll also see purulent discharge you'll see pus producing discharge right so pain redness swelling right tenderness because there it's uh, tenderness and painful as it's just almost the same thing right pain at the medial canthus along with epiphora there will be tearing as well and medial canthus there's a pain at the middle canthus right there here's the eye here's the nose Here's, and this is the medial canthus. If you touch the canthus, because the nasolacrimal uh, duct is here, somewhere around this area, and because it's inflamed, there's acute inflammation. If you touch the medial canthus, it'll hurt, right? There will be tenderness. A regurgitation test is not preferred due to tenderness because it hurts if you touch it. Complications can include orbital cellulitis, right? Cellulitis is basically inflammation of skin, right? It is a type of inflammation which uh, which actually affects the dermis of the skin right um, and orbital means it's around the orbit so if this is the eye right orbital cellulitis is inflammation all around the eye right the skin around the eye then you've got abscess formation abscess is actually uh, when you when you restrict pus into a tight space right like this here's an abscess right here's an abscess uh, you can see uh, clearly that if you uh, for example if you were to cut this open uh, there would be pus underneath right so abscess formation can occur near uh, in acute dacryocystitis and external fistula formation can also occur because see if, if there is continuous production of pus and there is no way out so the pus can kind of force its way out through the skin right and it could, it could form a fistula through which it can it can drain itself out so that is also one of the complications and then treatment is antibiotics because it's bacterial analgesics because it's pain hot fermentation right and uh, incision and drainage in case of an abscess formation right uh, then we have the chronic uh, dacryocystitis similar right but it's chronic it'll have its own characteristics like for example not painful right no pus production because it's chronic, right? So it's the chronic inflammation of the nasolacrimal sac due to blockage of the nasolacrimal duct. They're all very similar, right? Um, etiology, systemic disease, right? Just like with all chronic diseases, chronic uh, symptoms, there is always a chronic disease behind it. And repeated infections can also lead to chronic dacryocystitis. Symptoms can include excessive tearing. This is the only symptom which you'll find in most of chronic dac dacryocystitis cases, right? They will just have epiphora right they'll have continuous tearing and they, it, it'll not be usually painful and treatment is again antibiotics and surgical intervention for example DCR so what is DCR DCR stands for decryocystorhinostomy right so I've tried to make it very simple for you I don't usually explain surgeries uh, decryocystorhinostomy let's read it is a surgery it is a surgery uh, sorry about that it is a surgery which is used to eliminate fluid and mucus retention within the lacrimal sac right if it's deposited there this surgery can help us remove it and to increase tear drainage for relief of epiphora it involves 
removal of bone adjacent to the nasolacrimal sac in order to bypass the nasolacrimal duct obstruction. This allows tears to drain directly into the nasal cavity via a new pathway. So what it's basically saying is that, let's have a screen. So, so what it's basically saying is, for example, if, if we have the nasolacrimal sac like that, and it's draining right into the nasal cavity, right, and, and there is some obstruction here, See, here's because this is uh, we, we have a we have a bone closely associated to this whole place. What we can do is that we can say, okay, well, let's just leave this track. Uh, let's let's just leave the nasolacrimal duct altogether. Let's make a new let's make a new uh, let's let's make a new perforation. So what I understand by this surgery is what they basically do is they just cut the bone right, and they also they cut they cut an opening in the bone, and they also cut. The nasal lacrimal sac and they kind of join these together right so so when there are tears coming in they don't have to wait for this to open they can just directly flow into the nasal cavity all by themselves this procedure is called dcr right so it's not uh, something difficult right it's easy to get your head around and that's why i explain it here and yeah thank you for your uh, listening and uh, like subscribe and share if you think it's worth it It'll help me grow, it'll help me, it'll motivate me to produce even more better quality videos, right? And do give me uh, your feedback if you think I'm doing something wrong, if you think there is some audio problem, if you think I should change the way I'm, I'm teaching, right? Or eliminate or, or add something new, right? Please, your your uh, suggestions are very, suggestions are very valuable to me, right? And yeah, that's it. Uh, thank you very much and have, have a nice day.